Gather round, children, gather round. It's story time with just the little writer. In case you didn't know, that's me. Specimen. William raced toward the emergency exit and held the door open for his fellow co-workers. Terrified men and women ran as fast as they could to what they thought was a rescue vehicle. Nobody questioned William's directions as he ordered them to board a shuttle bus on the far end of the parking lot. When a bomb detonates in your office building, few questions are asked. Getting to safety is the only priority. The safety that was so desired was revealed to be a snare. Once the bus was packed to maximum capacity, William placed himself in the driver's seat. Murmuring and whispering ensued as it seemed odd that the head of security would just happen to also be the driver of a conveniently available bus. William turned the key in the ignition, fiddled with some unmarked knobs and buttons before making an important announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would reach under your seat, you will find an oxygen mask and shades. Please put them both on and secure your seatbelt. Thank you and your cooperation is appreciated. William watched as they all did as they were told. He picked up his radio and spoke a language that no one on the bus had heard before. Behind those masks and shades was nothing but horror and confusion. Alas, it was too late. William pressed the green button, turned a red knob, and spoke again in his native tongue. The passengers all blacked out on takeoff. They awoke to find themselves in glass-like containers inside of an unbearably bright room. The first to wake, a woman from accounting, looked around to make sense of where she was. She was moving, but not of her own accord. She was being wheeled around by someone or something. She heard voices coming from her left. They spoke in the same unidentifiable language as William, or the man she thought was William. Her eyes hadn't fully adjusted to the harsh light, but she could see things in close range. She looked to her right and gasped. In a container, much like her own, was William. He was on display on a shelf that went from floor to ceiling. The ceiling, as far as she could tell, was 50 feet high. William appeared to be asleep, but the woman figured his state was much worse. If William is here, then who was the man who came to rescue her and the others after the bombing? Her container came to a stop and was lifted into the air. One lifeless face after another came into view and tears formed in her eyes. A series of whirs, clicks, and beeps interrupted her moment of self-pity. The container turned around and dropped her off in her space on the shelf. She looked down and strained her eyes to see her captors. She watched in defeated anguish as the man who looked like William took a knife and slit his throat, wrist, and midsection. Little by little and inch by inch, the creature removed the fleshy disguise that had fooled two dozen intelligent people. Before the woman could scream, cry, or yell out in rage, a green gas filled her container, and her eyes closed. <laughs>